The views and opinions of the Nissan Nation podcast are simply that. They are views and opinions of its guests or hosts. They do not reflect Nissan corporate or otherwise. Now, a DRB and KGB media presentation, the Nissan Nation podcast. Hit it, Kelly. Recorded live, coast to coast, it's the Nissan Nation podcast. From camping, racing, and all points in between. The NNP is your Nissan Nation podcast. Now start your engines and welcome in your hosts, David, Danny, and Holden. What is going on, Nissan Nation? From all things Nissan here in Middle Tennessee to the greater ATL area, this is your Nissan Nation podcast in a... Holden, Holden, Holden. Is this Holden or is this uh, Batman's what I want to know? What is going on, buddy? Nothing much. I can neither confirm nor deny that me and Batman have ever been seen in the same room together. So, Well, the um, it is the time of year where you will start seeing Batman. Uh, the It's getting to be that fall spirit here in the U.S., and we uh, we do love our... Uh, love our trick-or-treating time and uh it's time for women to dress scampedly and uh you know it's all the good parts of uh the fall and after this i'm just kind of like i'm done <laughs> give me summer back <laughs> so what is going on man uh clearly you uh you've got something going on there a chest cold or something yeah uh, i'm not really sure i i know that they're saying like the ragweed count or something's like astronomical here so every so often sometimes i'll get a little funk so that's kind of what we got going on And then obviously working in the car business where you got to use your voice all day, I haven't really been able to rest it either. So a little bit of everything. And then you're like, hey, let's just do a podcast too tonight. Well, well, I've got no voice. Let's just keep it going, right? Well, we got to we got to we got to keep uh, keep our followers and listeners informed. They don't care if I have a cold or not. What they want to know is what we have to say. That is true. They do want to know that. And uh. Uh, I was telling you before the show, I had this something similar happen right before a podcast one time, and I looked at Danny, uh, and I was like, Danny, you've got to do the intro, man. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't even, I can barely speak through that, but uh, man, uh, oh, you got the NNP patch on tonight, man. Heck yeah. I, I do, and well, I guess no one can really see, but this is my super secret wait, shirt. Wait, wait, no one can see you say that, and I have video. Oh, let me model it. Oh, 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 they can't see. Can they see that? Oh, I can't yeah, stress. I see that. I'm not good at the yoga. What what shirt is this I'm looking at for the people that are watching here that they're like, I don't know what he's saying. What this shirt is, is this? This is the Regal Nissan Wint shirt. Did it available say? Available only at Wint. Does it uh, say Regal Beagle in there anywhere? No. <sighs> it has that super cool. Remember how we were giving Luke the hard time with the 515 racing yep. font? Yep. It's got that. So RegalNissanParts.com at the top and then original parts for your original ride. I like got it, man. Little trifecta of Frontier, Titan, and Xterra front end all blended together. So there's a little something I had in my head. I wanted to do some cool t shirts and they feel like they've been made of puppy ears and angel bosoms. Wow, puppy ears. That's uh that's amazing cloth. I don't know if Peto would uh would agree with that, but you know, did you speaking of Peto man, I I don't know whether our listeners are Peto fans or not. And I really don't. It's it's you know, this is political nation all of a sudden, but uh did you <laughs> see where that uh crab place there in uh, on the East Coast Baltimore area was like Peto put a sign above their building. I guess they had a billboard that you could rent out and they something about crabs are your friends. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw it, and I'll be honest, it was one of those things where I, like, saw it, and I didn't really pay attention to it, and then I, like, saw it on the news or something, I was like, what is going on with this crab billboard? And then I actually, like, took the time to look at it and read it, and I was like, oh, and then I was like, ah, that's pretty funny. That is very Touché. funny. Yeah, man, I, I went through and uh, was reading the, the Twitter feed, and uh, as long as it's not me getting in trouble somehow, I'm all about, like, you know, I think it's like you, you like to push me into trouble sometimes, like, hey, man, come on, just go for it. But uh, watching Peter like try to be cool and and do that, and then uh, then it shows like the crab shack people outside Peter like, hey, we're outside, man, come on out, come on out, Peter. Yeah. And then they had their stars like kind of jumping on. There was some basketball player, I guess, who kind of sucks that got a big sixty nine million dollar contract or something, and, and they were calling him out. And 
something about wanting a refund for the way you treated Chicago. I don't know, man, but it, that, it's always a fun Twitter is a fun place at times. I don't know if you use it a lot. Um, I do for Wendy's. Wendy's has a great Twitter, by the way, if, uh, here in the States, I don't know if our European people can follow that, but, uh, they're always taking on, uh, the righteous in the burger world. Yeah. I mean, I'm like on Twitter, but I don't really do anything on Twitter. So at one time I did win a contest, Dave, you'd be interested in this. I won a contest one time and AJ Green followed me. The official AJ Green. My number 18. My number 18 was following you on Twitter. Yeah. Is he still following you? I don't know. Because he went to Georgia, right? Like he went to your school, right? Yeah, he went to the University of Georgia. I forgot what what it was. It was some like he was trying to help someone out on some contest show or something. It was like the first five people to vote and screenshot it, I'll follow. So I like nice man. It's just like oh, I never win anything. Let me see, and then like next thing you know, so I was like, yeah, I'm kind of a big deal. AJ Green follows me. <laughs> it's not very. I mean, you know, it's just an NFL quarterback star. Uh, and speaking I of many, my Bengals, leather bound books and yes. NFL people follow me on the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Mister uh, Holden Burgundy over there. Um, yeah, I my my Twitter claim to fame is I once got uh, Mark Marin to uh, tweet with me for a second, and I got uh, Jay Moore with the Moore podcast uh, to tweet back at me. So that was always kind of cool. And I think Marin quit Twitter, so I mean, I guess we can't really follow and track that. But I, we were talking guitars for a minute, so that was super cool. Um, and speaking of Twitter, we actually do have a Twitter. I think it's just called Nissan Podcast, <laughs> and uh, occasionally I do check it. So uh, if you Twitter people, um, if you if that's how you communicate hit us up that way guys we're always looking for ways that you guys will interact and communicate with us and speaking of interacting and communicating we uh i actually have a video going on right now on facebook uh we got some of the regulars are in there watching we actually are up to four people right now holden we were up to almost 10 at one point um but i want to say hi to our uh our people following us and uh here you can see my my messy what's left of my my uh man cave ish or whatever we call it um, because this is the last time holding, we're doing a podcast from the NMP studios, uh, South. We're going back, we're going back, uh, North a little bit for the next, uh, the next studio. And, uh, we're just one step closer to Nashville. That's what it is. Well, I don't want to get that close to Nashville, but uh, a little closer to Brentwood and I'd be happy if I could afford that, uh, that area code. But, uh, and I was over by the uh, the old Nashville headquarters today, man. I uh, give a big old wave out to my friends over there in uh, the HQ. I actually have Nissan interns working for us this week. Really? You bash those interns, buddy. You take them <laughs> down. Uh, we got, let's see, Mr. Uh, Sean Spears is uh, says a shout out from the great white north. I'm assuming that's the land of Canada, um, which has a, uh, what do they do in Canada? They have a... Uh, my favorite sport of all time. My favorite sport of all time. The Olympics only comes. The Winter Olympics only comes around, Holden, every four years. But curling is literally my favorite sport of all time. I mean, you probably wouldn't have guessed that. I, I don't have the physique of a curler. No mustache. No beer in my hand. Not yelling with a broom in my hand. But but I am all about curling, man. I swear to God. Do you do you have like a? Is there an Olympic sport or something like that 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 the uh? The Regal Beagle over there uh, that he likes? Uh, not really. I mean, my wife's super into the Olympics, so I always watch it, but I don't have like this sport that I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Really? So you know what the great thing is right now is they can't hear a word you're saying on our Facebook feed, so I could say yes, the uh, figure women's figure skating is Holden's favorite sport right now. Can you I mean, guys I'll believe be honest, that? Probably the sport I watch the most of when the Olympics are on is probably gymnastics because my wife loves gymnastics. So hey, man, I would not, I'll watch that. I would not mess with any of them girls or guys, dude. They would whip your ass. No, I'm always like looking at those guys. I'm like that dude's like five foot two. I could totally take him. Then he like does a pinky handstand. I'm like, never mind. That guy <laughs> would rip my face off. Yeah, man. Them, them guys, uh, they would just grab like, I, I, you know, and then I'm a big, uh, I'm a big here. I'll leave this one for a little bit longer, but I'm a big fan of uh, American Ninja warrior too, while we're on tangents. And, um, a lot of those guys are gymnasts and I'm, I'm amazed. Like the littlest guys are the ones that do well in these like kind of gymnastic 
style sports like that. Uh, you would think you see these big six five guys like rip two eighty, like just nothing but an Adonis looking guy, and they like can't get past like the first or second challenge. And then this guy that's my height, a buck thirty, just nothing but sheer you know zero percent fat, and they just bounce off this stuff, man. Yeah, well you you're not having to drag your own big self around on top of doing crazy obstacles. So I could t- totally see how that would make sense. I know. I don't know. It's like one of those like grip strength things. Mm-hmm. I feel like since I've shed weight, I can do more pull-ups, not because I'm necessarily stronger. It's just, I have less of me to have to pull up. Hey, when, and when, of course you missed it when we went to wind rock last time. Um, that was the one thing I noticed losing the, the old LBs that I've done as uh, I went running up, uh, and I'm a land surveyor. So, I mean, I'm used to running up hills anyways, but I went running up a, a trail to check out something and I was like, I'm not winded. What, what is going on here? Um, I, I could, I, I felt like one of those guys jumping off the roofs of houses or buildings and stuff, man. Um, the uh, parkour action yeah, Dave, dude. from rock to rock. Well, pebble to, from pebble to pebble. Yeah. Over a rock. Yeah. And yeah, you see me do a cartwheel and I'm probably falling down the hill <laughs> somewhere, but no, no, I'm, I didn't say skillfully, uh, skillfully doing that, but, uh, Let's see what are oh, they're commenting. Ooh, uh, angry drunk women screaming, "Hurry, hurry, harder, harder!" for uh, for the old curling. That sounds about right. And uh, and there was some U.S. curlers this year that were just tearing it up, man. And uh, I've been trying to get one of my Canadian friends to uh, somehow steal me uh, one of those twenty six pound stones, man, and somehow somehow uh, get it down here. My friend Tracy up there in uh, uh, Regina, which rhymes with fun, is what I keep hearing. Um, that I, she keeps telling me she's got some, some, uh, some biker guys that are just, she goes, I'll get them to do it. I'm like, I don't know how I would get a a stone from Canada to to the States, but, uh, so any of our Canadian friends, if you, uh, you have a broken stone or something, I want a piece of stone for my next house guys. So uh, let's keep that in mind. Now, didn't like the U S team men's team or something last year weren't they like an amateur team or something that made it yeah it was like these you know like these guys you'd find they're like just average joe guys that (laughs) and they won like gold or something man it was ridiculous yeah i seem to remember that vaguely i mean i know the sport i just don't like keep up with it well the great i don't have as much enthusiasm as you seem dude i swear this i mean it's not even like if you're friends with me on facebook man you will see like curling everywhere on it man i'm i'm all about it and uh nissan there's you there you go nissan there's you a sport to get behind uh you can tighten up with uh and put all those stones in the back of your brand new uh uh Cummins <laughs> diesel there you know 26 pounds at a time and uh speaking of that holden we uh we got all kinds of news today man we uh they're uh they're been kind of uh been kind of anxious with this if I can been busy, busy little bees over there at the old Nissans. But before we get into that, speaking of busy bees, man, what's going on with the uh, with the Regal? Anything fun? Uh, not really. We just got done. Today was the last day of our factory sales event that we put on. Just trying to build some momentum in September. September is obviously truck month for Nissan. That's why you've seen a lot of Titan um, spots and advertising, everything like that. So we're pretty focused on Titan. So we got that kind of going. That's that's been that's been exciting. Uh, we gave away two 65 inch TVs and what? two PS4s. So where's, yeah, it's been fun. I, where's my TV, so. bro? I, a new house, 65 inch TV. I'm at 51 inches right now, man. Come on, man. Bigger is better, right? Should have come and bought a car. Damn it! I can't buy a car for another year. I'm stuck in a lease right now, man. Uh, and Nissan, if you would like to make that lease go away, I would appreciate it. And uh, maybe we talk about a new Armada, or I mean Patrol, or the next Frontier to sit in my driveway. But uh, yeah, sales. The, I mean, uh, we we got the we got the interns as well, so that's that's pretty fun. A uh, couple of interns in each department: service, parts, sales, finance. Um, college grads who are looking to expand their horizon into the Nissan corporate world. It's actually kind of cool. They get some boots on the ground training. Uh, they get to see some everyday stuff. Our direct Nissan kind of chose our dealership because we got some best practices. So they want uh, people to learn from our dealership. So we get to show people who might be future leaders of our region and whatnot some pains and stuff so we're gonna you know 
the parts guys were going to make them show up at six in the morning and help us put a parts order away to see when someone ships a bunch of crap and just throws it in the middle of a bay that sometimes stuff gets damaged and maybe that's not the best thing to do. We're going to make them, uh, make finance calls to banks and lending really? companies. So because just doing some everyday, you know, pressure points, pinch points that us as normal employees might have. Well, that is um, something like, I mean, I think even like Nissan in general, like they probably don't see a lot of, do they? I mean, they don't actually have to deal uh, with financing or anything like that. No, the guy you would call to complain about, hey, I'm having trouble with Nissan financing. You know, they jerked me around on a deal. He doesn't ever have to call those guys to know what you're talking about. So it really helps when you're making someone who's going to eventually be making decisions like that, but they're also writing their own reports. It really helps when they can say, hey, I did call and it is a pain in the butt and I can see how it could be an issue. So, right. Um, um, well, we've just got breaking news here, man. Um, Angel Rubio from California, man, one of our, our solid guys, he uh, he just asked me, why does Went not have a Snapchat? <sighs> I don't, Angel, uh, you're getting this. Do people, do people use, still use Snapchat? I, I guess if I was to get nude, I would have to use that because that's the only thing I know people do with Snapchat. <laughs> it's like for weird selfies or porn stars. I don't know, Angel. Um, I feel I, like I kind of used to have Snapchat, but then Instagram started doing the whole stories thing. And mm -hmm. it's yeah. like... And speaking of stories thing, you were a nut with that stuff, man. Let me tell you, uh, I, I get up in the morning and I'm like, what is Holden done today? What's the workout regimen? Because you love posting your, uh, your, uh, your workouts on there. And if you haven't yet, guys... The Scolden Holt, isn't that what your uh, your name is on there? It's Golden Hot, yep. It's just take hot. the S, C, and the H and flip them. That's right. It's worth a follow just for his uh, his uh, daily feeds because um, I seen your poor wife was like, she looked angry at you the other day because you, she was on, on one of them or maybe I'm friends with her on Facebook and I seen where she was, you took her to work out with you and it didn't it didn't seem to go well, buddy. Yeah, she was, she was pretty pissed. It was a good thing there was no one at the park then. She said she wanted to go run three miles. She was like, do you think I could run three miles? I was like, hell yeah, you could run three miles. You can do anything you set your mind I to. I say, yeah, run 10 miles so, if you want to. So so I had her going. I mean, it wasn't like lightning fast pace or anything, but had her going. We get to about, you know, 2.75 where she's starting to feel the burn. That was the furthest she'd ever ran. So I noticed she keeps looking at her watch, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> Just don't look at the watch. Just keep going. Don't worry about the distance. I'll tell you when you're there. All you need to focus on is one foot in front of the other. Focus on your breathing. I'm assuming she has an Apple watch that tracks this stuff. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, she did. So I'm sitting there. We're like at 2.95. And she's like, I'm going to die. I'm like, no, you got this. It's so easy. You're right there. Don't worry. <laughs> and then, well, so then she's like, just stop. Stop telling me to keep going. I'll keep going. And I was like, just, you got it. And because she, usually she says I'm not encouraging because sometimes right. my Marine Corps side takes over and right. I'm just like, just, you can fucking do it. Just stop <laughs> complaining and do it. So I was trying to be encouraging. And then she's sitting there yelling at me like, stop trying to be encouraging. Just shut up. Tell me when three miles is up. I swear to God, if you make me run a tenth of a mile over three miles, I'll kill you. I'll never talk to you. So in the park, she's sitting there like yelling this. I'm pushing our kid in the stroller. Right, right. <laughs> Trying to be like gentle daddy over here and, and mama bears. Uh... Well, because one, one time I did kind of mess with her. I told her we were going to run a mile and a half. And so we took off running. And she wasn't wearing an Apple Watch. It was just me tracking it. And we ended up running two miles. Uh -huh. Just to, I was trying to prove a point that she could do it. Right. If she didn't know the distance. So she had, when we were getting close to three miles, she I swear to God. If it's anything over three miles, I'm going to kill you if you don't tell me when to stop. <laughs> so I was just like, all right, three miles. Yay. Yeah, we did it. Like the daughter is crying and I'm like, yay for mom. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I can hear you like hearing your wife talk to you now when we did that trip, man. So I, I like I have her voice in my head and like I can hear what you're saying now. It's like, yeah, I definitely get that, man. Uh, no, I I've tried to take mine out for walks and she just looks at me like, <sighs> I don't have the time and uh i really don't either i like i was trying to do some running earlier in the year and then we got busy and and uh you know it's it's not for me not for right now anyways but speaking of that could be for us <laughs> oh yeah 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, man. We got all kinds of Nissan news, Holden. Um, I know there was a, there was a. What is this calling all Titans about, man? Did you uh, did you happen to check into this thing at all? I uh, I I have um, you have? I've I've checked into it. I have put in the word with our corporate that I want some of those shirts that they're passing out. Essentially, what it is is uh, Nissan's really pushing Titan. Obviously, September truck month. 19s are coming out. They still need to move some 18s, but they're also wanting to uh, give back a little bit too, which I, I think is really cool. But uh, one thing they've realized is a lot of truck owners are all about using their truck for certain work and things like that. So what you're going to see is they're giving a million dollars to the Red Cross, the National Park, and Habitat for Humanity. So they're they're kind of calling all Titans, and what they're kind of trying to push is be a Titan of your community be a titan of the outdoors could we be titans of podcasting you could be i think that's kind of i think there should be a be a titan of blank and remember how they used to do that with the xteros when the xteros first came out they had x equals Mm -hmm. i don't know if you remember that when they first came out i remember me and my buddy had the card and we had matching xteros with canoes that we went out (laughs) on this big expedition on one time and we took pictures like x equals yeah so i think you could then you know be a titan of smoking meats be a titan of <laughs> drinking beer you know Aaron power be a titan of miller, miller light <laughs> so yes mr I, Aaron powers be a titan of the miller lights man yeah this is a so it says national tennessee when is a titan more than a truck nissan's new marketing campaign calling all titans seeks to celebrate everyday heroes using the pickup trucks to improve the world around them these titans of the community neighborhood and outdoors are driving change from behind the wheel in their Nissan trucks. Uh, let's see. It says, we have seen the Titan customers are the kind of people. Let's see. I'm going to stutter with this because it's turned on me a little bit. Kind of people who want to get the job done and leave their world in a better place than they found it. Um, well, by putting more gas vehicles out there, I can see how you're going to leave the world a little bit better than you found it. Um, now, it's really, it is it is a cool thing, man. I don't, maybe Ford and everybody else does things like this, but if they do, I don't see it. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, our, our friend there, Wendy, they're one of their communications people. I seen she had hinted around, like I'm telling you, Wendy Ortherman, I believe is her name. She, uh... If you want to know what Nissan's about to drop, man, just go follow her on Instagram because you're going to see a, a good hint of it before that. And uh, but yeah, man, this is it. It really seems kind of cool. I uh, they seem to be big with uh with a uh, Habitat for Humanity, anyways. Um, do you does your dealership ever do things like that? Or we're not in with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, one of our new 2.0 features. Obviously, we put. I know we posted a couple of pictures. We're kind of waiting for it to get all the way done. We got a dog park that we're putting in the back. I have seen so that. So what we're getting into is actually with uh, local pet shelters and things like that. So kind of a uh, buy a truck, help adopt a dog, <laughs> things like that. Just put a puppy in the back of the truck. <laughs> buy a truck yeah. and all of a sudden you've got a puppy sitting back buy there. Buy a truck, get a dog. Um, but with with the with that, we're trying to do that. We're also looking into. I've uh, put in word. We got obviously Chattahoochee River that runs right down the road from us. So we're looking actually, and I swear to God, and people are not going to believe me, but I we were actually me and my executive manager were thinking of being uh the tight the Titans of the Chattahoochee and uh, helping with cleanup and stuff like that in the Chattahoochee, uh, sponsoring that with titans so we were already kind of it's going to dovetail kind of into this uh calling all titans post so i think it's something that's really cool i like i like the spot i like to add i like the uh call to action the only thing i don't and not crazy about is if you actually go look at calling all titans you know the hashtag that they got going on instagram you can actually see there was actually a press release package that they've been releasing so i've been kind of keeping up with it and They've been sending it to people who aren't truck people at all and are kind of well. That's not. That and that's is, one of these things you'll see is they send it to these press people who write blogs, who write spots, and I get it. You got to do that because they're obviously reaching people, you know, grassroots things like that. But I'd like to see Nissan do some of this, calling all Titans, you know, finding regular average guys, yeah, who are doing amazing things with their Titans, like the. 
you know, Team Venom Racing. I know I've reached out to them with my Titan XD page and have not got any response back. It's, so, it's amazing that the response you will get and won't get from uh from any big company and, and when you know when you think you're doing the good thing and the right thing and then uh and then yeah like nissan does have like they know cars like well they sort of used to know the enthusiast crowd for cars and then they, bless them they they try they really do try to uh like they want to get in the truck deal but they just don't seem to kind of know know how to do that uh but our our, our friend there miss wendy let's see i gotta i'm, I'm just on the run, I'm playing this and see what happens. Is it going to play? Man, it's not going to play. For some reason, my Mac is not wanting me to play video on here. But, um, yeah, I like it. And it would be really cool like to see like them like giving, donating like a dozen trucks to Habitat for Humanity or something like, you know, and or or there's some guy that that works for a man who is a titan in that man who might be you know how you have these people that are they're you know walking to work every day and and doing like that's a titan man in his field and uh, i would really like to see them do that um as long and that's as something that's something that could come you know down the line um def- definitely i i kind of think you know i said I, I reached out to him with my titan xd page just kind of saying hey i'd love to be you know help be involved in this campaign in any way possible. You know, we got almost 4,000 followers and that's strictly pretty much people are interested strictly in Titan XD. <clears throat> so obviously you're going to have the people you need to reach out to that write for magazines that write for online, things like that. And that's understandable. I just wish sometimes they'd reach out to, you know, some of their people who are doing interesting things with their Titans as well. I mean, there's people out there. So obviously you're going to have, you got to reach out to the people who are writing online and things like that. But there's nothing to say you can't, you know, be a Titan of your community. A guy like Team Venom Racing, you know, he works on the school buses and stuff for his community and then races Titans. That's Very that's calling all Titans right there. Um, I think that would be awesome. Calling all Titans. Now, Nissan's really been involved with charitable giving for a long time. It's core to who we are as a company. But we did a lot of research into people who are buying our trucks and, and interested in our Titan. And what we found was this fascinating uh, thread in their personalities, which they are Titans themselves, people who really are dedicated to giving back to the community and making the world a better place. So we're launching a Calling All Titans campaign, reframing the idea of what it is to be a Titan. It's not just a truck. It's also someone who's really doing great work and being an everyday hero in their community. Core to this campaign is also a donation of a million dollars to three different amazing organizations, a million dollars each, one of which is the titan of the community that we're highlighting, none other than the American Red Cross. So I'm here today in Nashville with Sarah Basil from the American Red Cross to learn more about their great organization. Good morning, Sarah. And uh, we'll uh, we'll let that go Absolutely. for a minute. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely cool. Um, Wendy does their truck stuff. She, uh, she seems to do a pretty good job with it. Um, I mean, they've, they really over there, they're really trying to, they're really trying to get, you know, people interested in the truck and, and I, they're doing as cheap as Nissan is with their commercials and stuff. They're really like social media, like they're trying to like make a presence there. And I, I, I really think maybe it's cause we follow them, but I really see like Nissan doing a lot more for this stuff, social media wise than any other car, car manufacturer. Um, but kind of wrapping this up, man, I, I think it's cool. Um, sometimes it just, just like they're, uh, when they release these um, theme trucks, it just seems like as cheap as they do it, they try to get a quick couple day bang of, of uh, social media and then go on. So hopefully it's not like this, and I doubt it is, knowing these companies are working with. No, I'm hoping, you know, they. I I think there's potential with, with this. I think it's something – that they need to do right though, because just showing, you know, someone that's with the Red Cross, just showing a guy talking about the national parks, just showing someone with the Habitat for Humanity, that's not going to get the job done. That's not going to spark the interest. You talk about, hey, we took, you know, some Titans and we went through Moab and wheeled the Titan and picked up trash. That's calling all Titans. Yeah. You know? putting that truck to work like let's let's see it work let's let's 
let's find people that are using their Titan for interesting things in the community. Right. And, and um, speaking of that, man, Nissan, you guys want to go do something like that. I will fly to Moab and I bet I can gather a hundred different <laughs> Nissan owners to go out there. And if you want to go clean up something in the parks area out there, I guarantee you we can organize that, man, because uh, we're fairly connected with, <laughs> within the off-road world, and uh, I bet we could do something Titan like that. We could tighten up, buddy. That's what we could do. We, we could tighten up. We could tighten these um, park systems up is what we could do. So we've, we've called all Titans, Dave, and now I want to call someone else. Oh, oh. I want to I call Warrior... <laughs> Come wait, wait. out to play. Right before you do that, though, let's let's talk to another Titan. Hey there, Nissan Nation. This is Jim Bob. Today, I got a question for Mr. Holden Scott, a.k.a. Scolding Hype, baby. <laughs> what a name. Anywho, uh, Mr. Scolding, um, would y'all like to sponsor Jim Bob... At Regal Nissan, okay? Um, I got a plethora of ideas, marketing tips and tricks that I can, you know, put on y'all's interwebs. Um, all you got to do is sponsor me a Nissan Frontier SV edition on 35s with an ARB rear locker, front locker, hefty fab bumpers, um, gotta have the tow mirrors. I need the tow mirrors. Uh, I'm, my list is gonna keep on growing with the contingency that you know we're able to do business. Anywho, uh, just let me know. I'll be listening to the show to find out. So, I, I, also, if you got that cool technology with the yield stuff in it, uh, you know, if, if you were able to talk to Nissan about all that, I would love to know. Okay. So anyway. Y'all have a good night, uh, and we'll be talking to y'all soon. Jim Bob is out. <laughs> I uh, I couldn't wait. I was trying to get me in there with the Titans because Jim Bob is a Titan of uh, Nashville Overland for sure. Uh, Holden, do you have a rebuttal to these things? That what can Jim Bob bring to you that that would want Regal <laughs> Nissan to donate anything? Well. I, I would love to sponsor Jim Bob, but in order for me to sponsor Jim Bob, I would need Jim Bob to actually physically come work at my dealership because I think we could do an outreach program to our upper north Georgia, kind of southern Tennessee clientele. And I think Jim Bob would be the perfect man to head that department up. So if Jim Bob wants to move down, I'm sure we can set him up as a a, a salesman, a traveling salesman in this <laughs> frontier with 35 going trailer, going trailer park to trailer park. He didn't even got to knock on the doors because most of the trailer parks around here ain't even got doors. Well, you know he what? He just kind of hollers in, Hey, anybody home? You put Want a mag, truck? you put a mag flow muffler on there, buddy. And they know the sound they're coming running oh, out. Oh, they know with oh, uh, oh, oh, dollar Mac bills, Pro. buddy. They'll just throw dollar bills in the back of that uh that uh truck that he's wanting to be sponsored. Uh my buddy Jim Bob, he uh he'd uh we've been talking to him about doing a little segment, man. He sent me that and I was like, I couldn't wait to get that in there. And you know, you were killing my segue. I was like, Titan, we got a Titan here, man. And then uh you sprung the warrior stuff on me, man. What are you what are you doing to me with this warrior stuff, man? You were teasing me all day about it, and uh you 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 brought some crappy movie up earlier. For for those of for those listening. First off, I have a bone to pick because I sent Dave, hey, I got a perfect name for this episode. Warrior, come out to play. And he just sent me, sure. I was like, <laughs> well, I was you're not driving at the, I literally was driving at the time you sent this to me this morning. I was like, do you not get the reference? He's like, no. I was like, you never seen the Warriors at the end? Everyone, if you haven't seen the movie, go watch the Warriors. Top 10 cult movie classic. It's It's... It's a cold movie, so there's going to be people that absolutely hate me for telling you to go watch it. But at the end of the movie, right before, you know, it kind of ends, you know, rival gangs, they're fighting, whatever. But there's one part that I'll never forget where the guys, Warriors, come out to play. <laughs> so I was like, that's a perfect He's clinking in bottles. Thing. He's clinking in bottles, too. He's clinking movie. these bottles. So that's, if you're wondering, like, has Dave and Holden lost their effing minds? What is this picture that they posted on the social medias? That's from that movie, and that's that's the actor that's doing that. 
but I teased it the other day and then I, you know, was driving thinking about what to talk about on the podcast tonight. And I was, I was thinking, Dave, why does the warrior not come out to play? That is a good question. That's like the billion dollar question right now, because, uh, between one of our best episodes is our, our episode on the, uh, frontier that we did uh, a few back and about the gen three frontier. And uh, other than the, that being a top question we get, and Xterra, obviously, uh, we get a lot of 350 or uh, Z questions, but then it comes to Warrior, man. And if you ever want to start something on one of these uh, Facebook groups, just bring up the um, bring up the Nissan Warrior. So uh, why doesn't it come out to play, Holden? That is a good question. I, I've always heard from Nissan that they're waiting to sell X amount of Titans before they consider building it, that corporate doesn't believe there's a need for it, that why would we waste the money r and ding something when we can't move trucks? And kind of what I've said is, what if you build something to drive people to the brand and then there's going to be people who can't afford it, mm-hmm. but that they, they end up in a normal Titan? Is that crazy? Is that is that crazy talk? Well, first off, let's let's break down the Warrior a little bit. Um, when 2016, the Nissan, when they were kind of building some excitement for the uh, for the Titan itself, they uh, even before they released the gas version, they you know were teasing, oh, the Cummings, you know, coming soon, all this stuff, and uh, they built a one-off uh, showpiece, and it's called the Nissan Warrior concept, and. Uh, Sadly, the guy that designed it's moved on to a different company, which seems that anytime Nissan builds something super exciting, like the IDX or anything, guess what? Well, they moved on to another company. But um, the Warrior, man, it was like minimal changes really to this truck. The lights are, the headlights are different. The fender flares are a little different. Uh, the colors are super unique that I don't know what you would call it, kind of a pewter and, and kind of a gold orangish color. Very Nissan colors. Um, but it, it, the only thing I will say for the concept that didn't do me was they put a diesel in it and it was like, well, I don't know any, I mean, I know, I know there's the bro dozer club that loves diesel and, uh, you know, they get incredible amounts of horsepower out of that thing when they're rolling coal. But, um, if I think of sheer performance, I probably think of gasoline engine and I know, I know my diesel guys are going to be like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. You don't know about diesel. And you're right. I don't know. I mean, I know what a basic diesel does, but I think of ultra perform. I don't think of the Chevy Corvette and I don't go, man, diesel. That's, that's what's holding that car back. So when I think of a high performance vehicle, you know, I don't see Ford who is like probably the king of diesel trucks in their uh, Raptor doing diesel. Unless you live in the, um, the land of Australia and you get the little Ranger that's because they don't have a gas engine. But so right off the bat, I'm like, love the, love the thing. And then it's uh well, let's put a, let's take that, that, uh, that V six, that endurance 5.6 liter, beautiful, beautiful sounding engine. And let's kick it up a notch. Holden. Do you think like, cause I know we've teased it a little bit with the warrior, maybe a concept going to a frontier. If they were really to build it, do you do you think V eight? What do you think? I mean, I think I think you roll with the the V eight. I mean, you can do some minimal bolt on upgrades. That motor's more than capable to push something like that. Because let's be honest, if you're talking about building this Titan Warrior, you're looking to p- compete with um, the Raptor things like that. The, so you're really looking more at suspension upgrades, you know, obviously the look and the exterior, the interior being different. The motor doesn't have to be that crazy. I mean, you start talking about maybe throwing on a bolt on cat back exhaust, cold air intake, some very simple um, engine modifications, maybe a different tune. I, th- I think you'd have a happy, happy customer. So, um, I think what really sparked me kind of, you know, starting to really question this is I've always wondered why not build something to drive people to the brand. That's essentially what a GTR is. It's a halo car that is supposed to drive people to the brand and people who don't end up buying GTRs, but they're at least at Nissan stores, looking at Nissan cars, putting Nissan on their list. Right. I think a Titan warrior would do something like that. You know, maybe a guy can't afford the warrior, 
but he can afford a regular Titan. He can afford, you know, a Pro 4X, what, whatever the case may be. And I go back to, I'll try to post it up on the social medias the next day or two, but there was an, one of my favorite Nissan print ads they ever did was the old hard body frontier, the, the race version that everyone, you know, drools over every time, the desert runner. But it was a picture of a regular hard body and then the desert runner. One under it said, Mr. Hyde, the other one said Dr. Jekyll. And it and it kind of just, you know, went into even if your wife won't let you buy, you know, the the race version, at least you know that a monster is lurking inside. And it's just kind of that you still have the underpinning of the race truck, of the coolness, even if you got the regular version. Well, I mean, I Ford's obviously proven that um that you can build a high-end truck like that. I mean, they used to do the lightnings and stuff like that. And GM used to do the cyclones and the typhoon little, little trucks that were supposed to be performance based. Um, and they, you know, like the Raptor, they, they don't have any hard time selling that vehicle. And, uh, really nobody, I know, I know Ram is sort of in that market with whatever they call, what do they call their little, the, now you're going to be surprised. I actually did homework for this episode. What? So before we got on, I was actually looking it up. I kind of, because what got me thinking is I saw, if you haven't seen it, Chevy came out with a ZR2 Bison concept vehicle that they're supposed to be releasing later this year. So I started kind of thinking like, you know, Chevy's got this ZR2 Bison. And now before someone starts saying it, none of these vehicles that I'm about to list, not all of them are in the same class. I realized some of them are bigger trucks, some of them are smaller trucks, but what I kind of listed out was, you know, some interesting off the wall, just not your normal everyday run of the mill trucks. So Dodge, they got their power wagon starting at $52,000. But the power wagon's not the, like the high, the kind of, what do they call it? The Ram well, runner or something or. Well, then they got the rebel, the rebel yeah. as well. But the power wagon, that's a, that's kind of a high up there. You know, it's got the bumper, the winch, the exhaust, those type of things. So that starts at fifty two thousand. You got a Raptor starting at fifty one thousand. You got your Colorado ZR two starting at forty six thousand. You got your Ranger Raptor, which is supposed to be coming out. They're guessing it's going to be starting at forty forty one thousand. It hasn't been officially announced, but that's kind of what everyone's thinking. Then you have new with uh, that's being teased in the commercials that Tacoma TRD Pro, the 2019s with the snorkel and all that. I think that's going to be an interesting truck, kind of see. Mm-hmm. You know, Toyota's really doing something crazy with that. Uh, they're and, guessing that's going to be starting forty one to forty two thousand dollars. And the commercial, like you shared a commercial to me the other day, it was what was Chuck Norris, man. It was freaking awesome yeah. commercial. I hate I hate yeah. to brag on Toyota, but it, out of any other brand, I guess we have to brag on Toyota a little bit. Yeah, I was just telling that to one of our Nissan corporate guys. Like, I, I'm sorry, maybe I'm not supposed to like this ad, but this is like one of my favorite ads right now. Um, so then, like I said, you got the Chevy ZR2 Bison. That was kind of just announced that it is going to be coming out. You know, guys, if you haven't seen it, I shared it is that with, the, with is, the Warrior teaser. Is that that Bison, is that actual General Motors building that? Because I know they did the Reaper or whatever another company was doing it's, that truck. It's it's AEV parts is kind of the accessories that they're adding to it, but it, yeah, it's general motors, you know, that's going to be building it. So they haven't announced any pricing whatsoever on that. I'd, I'd be guessing you'd be looking at 46 to $48,000. Ah, okay. So So that's the one that with the snorkel and everything and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Okay. Okay. So you got all these for everyone saying there's not a market for these trucks. There's all types of, I mean, a lot of these trucks are, you know, trucks that they're already making, they're just adding different things to them. It's essentially a package, but, you, but it makes people want it. But you know what I find amazing though? Okay. So, so Jeep's building a Wrangler and they sell a hundred thousand of these silly things a year. Very basic, easy to build. Like they're making hands over fist money because there's nothing to that. There's two axles, a basic motor. I know they're getting into some tech stuff, but it's a very simple, cheap truck to build. Now, now you're getting like Chevy and all these guys. It's like they, they want to play in that market, but they don't want to play in that market. So what do they do? They take their little midsize truck and try to compete with the Wrangler. And I, I, I know what kind of where you're going with that. And before you get to there, like, do you see like a midsize truck? And I know the, the, um, the Warriors, we're not talking about really a midsize, but 
for some of these that you're talking about, our mid-sized trucks, do you think that they technically take on the the Wranglers and stuff like that? I I don't think they do. I think they kind of take on guys who want trucks, who don't necessarily use their truck for work. They just like a truck. Mm-hmm. They need a truck. Um, but it, it lets them, you know, have that cool – it, I think it plays partly to the overland crowd and people that think that's a cool lifestyle. You know, half the people that are probably going to buy some of these trucks with a snorkel, they're never going to actually use a snorkel. They're never going to, you know, they probably don't even know what a snorkel is really for. Oh, so you can drive underwater. Oh, my God. That that kills me every time I see that. Some kid, some 16-year-old kid posts about wanting a snorkel, and it's like, yeah, if I had a snorkel, this mud wouldn't have got me. You're like, what? Yeah. You better seal up so, everything else. Yeah. I, I mean, it. it's just like, you can buy a Ford F-150 and, you know, put your Fox suspension. You can do a lot of the Raptor stuff without having to pay Raptor price tags. So I, th- I think it's obviously showing that there is a market there for these, you know, cool looking aftermarket styled trucks, you know, stuff that's different. People are willing to pay more money to that. And even if they're not, you're at least getting people who maybe didn't have Chevy on their truck. Maybe they were going to go to Toyota, but they like the look of the ZR2 with, you know, the light bar and all that. So they end up getting one. And that's kind of my point is then you have the Titan Pro 4X starting at $43,000. So we're, we're talking about midsize Colorados and Tacomas that are more expensive than a Titan Pro 4X uh, gas burner. So it's kind of like, Nissan, you're saying there's not a market, but how are other brands charging more for a midsize truck than you are a full size truck? <clears> and right, I pro- promise you, Toyota's not hurting. So and Toyota isn't doing 10k in rebates every month. Either. Yeah, so I've just always I've I've preached it ever since they kind of showed the Titan Warrior is I think that's a truck you build to bring people to the brand. Mm-hmm. I think you make that a halo truck. Um, and then you do some things, you sell some things where someone can buy a normal Titan and maybe add a couple things that make it kind of look like a Titan warrior. Just, just to, just to try to, because that's what you got to do. If you're trying to capture market share, you either got to come in with a price that just, it's stupid. If you don't go at least look at the truck, which Nissan hasn't done, or you got to build a product that's far superior than the competition and years ago, that used to be true of imports. You know, they were built better than domestics, and you could have that argument. But that, uh, let's be honest, most cars are very well built these days. Yeah. So what you got to do is you got to inspire people's imagination. You got to make people want to at least go take a look at that. And in my opinion, Nissan doesn't have that with their truck truck lineup right now. No, because what they do is they, they make these uh, beach trucks or all this stuff that, for one, you're never even going to get close to seeing a truck like this in a showroom. Uh, you know, the, and like they use these exotic colors on these. And I know what it's what you do to kind of capture people to make you look at the, the truck. But, you know, we, we the last episode, we, we ranted a little bit about how Nissan was dropping the yellow and then somebody had the little spy photo they shouldn't have of the orange truck coming in. It's like that's a recycled color, guys, with, within Nissan. Uh, that orange is on every rogue and everything else like that they they build it's the same damn color um and and even even some of the color choices they could they could like do a little better i think um and and yeah like you said if you want to do aftermarket warrior parts man do it um that i mean i had somebody the other day was like we i think it was on this we posted up about um they were they were kind of making fun at Nissan on our page about uh yeah I know when did Nissan ever when are they ever going to come out with those body or the uh the factory lifts and you're like I had to comment I was like they're there guys but you know what they did they brought it out and then dumped it on the market and then hope hopefully it sells itself hopefully dealers do it dealers do all the hard work for us and I have y'all sold any of that stuff yet uh, I actually just had this conversation with our farm the other day. No, we have not sold any of the icon lifts. You know why? Because to get an icon lift from Nissan, I have to fax in a form. I have to call the farm. I have to fill out a special sheet and they send it to me. 
So it's like a really block it's that I can just and I'm not getting them at that much crazier of a discount than I can through my normal suppliers of where I get other lifts and items like that. So that's ridiculous, man. That 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 seriously, like I don't understand why that would be difficult to it it's pretty simple man is it is it just a like because of warranty or it, is it i'm i'm not sure because i haven't even bothered trying to order one uh to be honest with you just because i'm not going to sit there and jump through hoops and do all that when i can just pick up a phone and call someone and order it for the, pretty much the same price yeah yeah well but um, once again i mean it, some of those parts were on this concept truck we're talking about and that that is exactly what that's what frustrates me is this zr2 bison that we're talking about that you know made me even start this whole conversation on this podcast that was a sema truck last year that aev did for chevy yeah and now they're going to be producing it so it's like what really guys come on now because that was always my thing with the titan lift is it was my understanding that they were going to do some of those from the factory that right, way. Right, right. And that's not the case whatsoever. Yeah, I they not they definitely did. Whisper. They definitely did tease that, didn't they? Of like, oh, it's going. You're going to buy this truck with the factory lift and stuff, and then it's just like been nothing. And I, I don't get, I don't get where, like, they sort of come off, man. Like, like the more we're talking about this, the more pissed off I'm getting about it because I'd forgot about a couple of these things. It's like. Just, just put a from a when you pick up, you order a truck. I want to see it come off the the damn eighteen wheeler with a lift on it, and you guys just go sell it, man. It's not the dealer's responsibility to to have to install the damn thing or or get into that. Well, because then you also get into the whole fact of tires and things like that. And I I know me and you've had this conversation off air before, but you got some dealerships that you know take those tires and. They resell them, keep them, whatever they do with them. And then so they take the sticker price of the truck that included those tires and then they add the price of a lift and tires. Yeah. But you took those tires off. So how is that? How does that work? Like what comes first, chicken or the egg? What, who, how does that factor out? But if you were doing this from the factory where you said, hey, we're going to lift these trucks two and a half inches, this icon lift, we're also going to put whatever you want to put. Yeah. Uh, whatever their tire is. They're going to go too big, but they're going to go to a re- more reasonable size. Then it's done, and I'm not storing old tires in the back of my lot and having to credit the truck back, and then or you don't this, have your, that, uh, the other. your kid that washes or, your car trying to sell tires on Craigslist, or yeah, anything, you know. Um, and and really, what happened is they took too long. They took too long with it, getting the icon into the dealer's hands, getting them available, and so many dealers just you know had. Other companies come in and say, "Hey, we'll sell you rough country stuff." And speaking and, of speaking of things getting out of hand, man, uh, we've got young young Daniel Groders over there, buddy. What's up, Danny? What's up, suckers? Sorry, uh, sorry, getting late to the party. Yeah, I work late, and come home, and ramshackling the kids and whatnot. Sounds like I stepped into Rant Nation here, bro. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> well, we yeah, we're talking about how um, we'll go in go into a whole little kind of give us a recap. Well, we're kind of talking that post I made the other day about is it time to build the Warrior when you have, you know, Dodge with their Power Wagon, the Raptor, Ranger Raptor, the ZR2, the ZR2 Bison, the Tacoma TRD Pro. And I've been told there's not a market for trucks like that, but everyone else has seemed to find a market. There's, 40, so then, there's 46 different versions of the Ram. There's 72 versions of the Ford. The, yeah, the, the Chevy ZR2, the ZR4, the ZR12, the freaking sportsman bagman the Ch- chapelman <laughs> everything you could think of on every other retail and if you want to be competitive you have to i and i think the warrior is far more i mean it's superior to every and there's got to be a way to make it affordable and and i think if you were to make it you know up there with the raptor even i think it would be like that it would it would have enough of that dare to be different you know, stand out a little bit more, well, be, you know, step away from the crowd. Well, Danny, if they, um, if they were to build it, they would offer 10 K off of it real quick, buddy. So it would be more affordable that? because every time, every month is there's, there's eight to $10,000 in rebates on these trucks. So as soon as they offered <laughs> it, there's, it's cheaper already. 
Yeah, well, well I'll tell you what, dude. I, I drove I t- today I drove a uh, a Raptor on 39s with some pretty badass full front suspension, brand new Raptor. Literally, um, we were, we were doing some work on it, um, kind of a collab thing with another shop. And what an amazing machine, dude! Like it is. The Raptors are a cool machine. This is a, like I said, it's a brand new one. Had a full suspension kit on the front end, you know, extra, uh, bigger coilovers, bump stops, upper and lower control arms, um, and it was on 39 Baja um, KD, KDRs. I can't, I can't remember the, basically the the race tires, 39 inch race tires, something you'd see on a trophy truck. What did and what you, a monster, dude? What did you think of the twin turbo V6? Uh, <laughs> That thing's, that thing's fast, dude. Is it really? It was on 39s and it was screaming, bro. I mean, it's that thing's tuned up. But I mean, th- that's the thing, dude. Is it, that that that's a hundred thousand dollar truck, dude? I mean, you have got to be able to make that warrior work. There's, it's got to be possible. And I don't, I just don't see why Nissan, whoever's in, you, bros, whoever's in charge of the Nissan truck doesn't doesn't say to a couple of his peons, hey. Obviously, we pump this thing out. We put some R&D. We work through this. Make this happen. This will work. If we put a little bit of work and time into it, we will be able to make money. If if we don't make money, they'll, they'll break even, and they will seriously get some name out and get some street cred in the truck business. That's exactly what you need in the truck business. You need some street cred. You need a little bit of wow factor. You need people to say, oh, my gosh, do they make that pretty rad truck? And even if they don't buy the the, the Warrior concept, a lot of guys may end up like wishing they had the warrior concept and they'll buy a Titan and trick it out a little bit and be like, yeah, it's almost a warrior concept. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you pretty much verbatim said what I was just saying a couple think, minutes ago yeah. was you, you build a truck like that to drive people to your brand. It's a halo truck. It is. And- it is. There's so, there's so many pros. I mean, I, I'd love to be in a boardroom and try and, and try and just like scream this at the top of my lungs. And find out what the big hang-up is. I guess that's the thing is, you know, we're, we're the little guys. We're the enthusiasts and whatnot. We don't see the big picture that they see. And maybe they got stats and numbers and whatnot. But at the same time, I I really – it's hard for me to to see what kind of big stats and numbers are, are going against this. Because, I don't know, we, we, got, our, we got our ear to the to – the, I mean, we're, we're thick in the fad and, and what's cool, what's not, uh, we're thick in it, right? You know? So I think we are at the, at the cusp of, of knowing what's, what's cool. You know what I'm saying? What's cool in, in, in our market. Um, and you know, the, the guys around the market, we're, we're the kind of people that the neon the Nissan should say, Hey, let's ask these guys what they think. And then we'll compare that to our stats and graphs and, and our other people, as opposed to, you know, hey, let's just look at stats and graphs. Well, Danny, or, they they can't. That's all I can think of. They can't afford to make these trucks right now because they have a rear door system now that tells you when you've left somebody in the car. So they spent all their dollars, their schmeckles are all spent on uh, on this technology that for something that you shouldn't have you shouldn't have left in the car anyways. But I guess if what? your kids and it here. just baffles me because this is a company too that you know kind of let's be honest, they fell into the rogue. I know. Everyone yeah, wants... Rogue almost seems, seems like a, a beautiful accident. Yeah, it was because they were really the ones to really take off with that trend, with that SUV, CUV, whatever you want to call it. That That's something they were not expecting to take off like it did, and it did. So sometimes you do have to throw stats and what makes sense. And Because guess what? As, as a car salesman, I know that sometimes there's people who come in stats charts and this is what I want to pay X, Y, Z, but there's a reason why you do that trial close on the test drive. You try to close them on the test drive because that's when the emotions are high. They're feeling good. And guess what? Sometimes you got to throw the stats and numbers out the window and say, you know what? This is the kind of truck that people will make a stupid decision and buy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And- tell me, tell me, Holden, tell me you could not sell those things all day long for like 80 K dude. All day long, I mean, all, yeah. all you need is you. You th- there, there's probably like three or four customers you'd call and be like, "Hey, dude," and you you know you got a couple customers where it's like you call them and be like, "Hey, bro, we got something here. You gotta try. I just took this thing out. Oh my gosh, you know, 
I had a guy like, that called we have, me. We have some Rams customers in, a, in our in our tire shop. We have Rams customers. We're doing a VA. We're doing an LS swap on a on a on a um, on a uh, Jeep right now. A Jeep uh, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, and it, like it, if I just transfer that over into like the like a car buying world. If I had a if I had a dealership, I got a couple of these big name big name guys, and I just call them and be like, hey, dude, I know I just sold you a car last month. That thing's awesome. Trade that thing in. Come here right now and drive this thing. I don't. I don't care what you're doing. I'll drive to you. We're gonna go take this thing for a drive. You go beat on it. Guarantee you can sell that thing to, you know, well, ten rich people. Well, and then and then here's the next thing. You've got GTR sitting over there. How about a Warrior GTR? You you you've already got a hundred thousand dollar truck. Let's make the hundred and twenty thousand dollar truck. You know, I mean, it, it's all there. I'm serious. Like you take that V8 and you you put a twin turbo on that. We just t- yeah put the put the V6 the twin turbo V6. Make it make stroke it, dude. Give it a little bit of more torque. You put the GTR motor in a war. I had a truck. I had a guy not even a month month and a half ago call me. He had a Titan. He has more money than he knows what to do with. He wanted me to try to figure out a way to trick it out and make it look like a Titan Warrior. And I'm like, man, that'd be expensive. Just in my head, I was like, man, that'd be expensive. He's like, what do you think? Like ten, fifteen thousand dollars? I was like, yeah. I was like, but then I, I don't even know how you'd start that project. Like, yeah. I, I can't just make a yeah. truck look completely different. But that's the thing, dude. Is you call and that guy. He was say, willing hey, to let's... just drop another fifteen thousand dollars on top of an already fifty-two thousand yeah, dollar truck. Call that guy and you say, hey, listen, man, I know you wanted me to turn this thing in. I got my hands on a warrior. Let's trade your old truck in. Let's get you a new warrior. It's get I'll, I'll make the I'll make the numbers work. You just come down and test drive it. You can sell that all day, dude. All day. Oh yeah. I'd buy a billboard right across from the Ford dealership with a Titan <laughs> Warrior on it. That would be sick. That would be way sick. That would be sick, man. And, and uh, speaking of sick, Danny, uh, have you noticed that Holden's voice is a little uh, Batmanish tonight? Oh, he sounds—he sounds like like something got after him. <laughs> he's uh hes Where the, are they? He's the, <laughs> swear to me. Da- Danny's the podcast host we deserve, but Holden's the one that we end up with, or something. <laughs> you know, you know what he reminds me of uh, the captain from Jaws. Every time. Go out into the ocean. That's wind. Playing the sharks. Twenty four of us go out. Who came back? I think we're gonna need a bigger Titan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's kind of what we've been discussing. Yeah. I was telling Dave, I did, I did my homework, and you know, you got Raptors like just starting at fifty. One thousand dollars. So you got eight thousand yeah. dollars of cushion between that and a Pro Four X Titan. Well, you yeah, can't you tell can... me you can't. You can't make that work. Yeah, you get you get a Raptor, and yeah, starting at fifty, and then you add you know premium wheels and four four hundred different options. I mean, Ford Ford is notorious for having you know a million different versions of everything they have, basically, and like you know the LT, the LX, the LTX, the the, the LTZ, the ZR2, the ZR23, and whatever. Not the and, board, but and and who knows? Maybe it's something we do end up seeing, like we've hinted at in the past. The next frontier, think Warrior. Who's to say when they're not rolling that out? Maybe they also roll out the full size version, or maybe they, maybe they don't want to take away the thunder from the new frontier they got coming out. That that that's not something I wouldn't put past. They don't want to come out with a Titan Warrior. They want the frontier to be fresh and completely different. Um. That that could also be something, and then after a year or two of the frontier, once that kind of dies down, you get that big initial push. Maybe you see the Titan Warrior come out after that. Hey, yeah. and if you sell five of them at the dealership, you get uh, what entered into the uh, what is that club called? Oh, uh, the Warrior Club. Yeah, man. And uh, with the sixth the one, you get a free the, pair of kicks. The non-existent man. Warrior Warrior Club. Yeah, that's <laughs> it, but in not not shitting on deal. Like I know it's hard selling trucks, man, but. That's the thing is you you tease everybody and you're teasing your dealers too. Warrior Club, this you know there now let's be let's be a Titan guy and all this and it's like, and then you well, just that, that's not that's not minimum sell five. That's the top fifty. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm just salesman. I'm just being silly. It just happens to be that's one of the numbers is five. <laughs> yeah, you get five stars, buddy. Um, hey, so I I got a, I, I I just had a thought and this this could be some thinking. They may be thinking, okay, the Warrior was a big hit. 
uh, but we didn't want to overshadow the, the kickoff of the Titan and, and, or, I mean, I'm just kind of be a devil's advocate right now and, or, you know, try, try and hurt regular Titan sales or whatever their thought process may be. And maybe they're, maybe they're putting that one in the pocket for, let's just say they do a Titan refresh. They do a facelift and they roll the big, they, you know, they roll the Titan warrior out with some kind of facelift, um, down the road another year or two um that that could be a thing yeah but the, here's and the thing like, is it's our it's almost due for a refresh and i know in in saying. frontier maybe, terms maybe years away from a refresh but in God, front, I mean, you know how, you yeah know, in frontier you know, terms they've still got another 10 years to go but uh in <laughs> titan what, and big what, truck what i'm worried about is going to happen is i'm worried that the refresh in like a year or so with titan is going to be they're going to take some of the schemes of the Titan Warrior, maybe the colors, headlight, <laughs> some, some simple things. Some totally hold, watered down version. Water it down and just say Titan Warrior. I feel like That's uh, what I'm worried. I feel like you that have some insider insider information that might uh, lead us to that, Holden. <laughs> that would that would be confirm the worst nor case. deny might, any of that. It might well, be, that's that what would I'm be worst about. case scenario. Well, ultimately, though, um, you all it all leads back to dealerships. And speaking of dealerships, I have a little rant of my own. So if, if you and this goes along with the Titans, if you own a Titan, obviously the first couple of years in any new truck, there's or car. There's always a couple little things, little hiccups that, that they find. And uh, <clears throat> holding my uh, my Titans develop this lack of air conditioning on the driver's side. And come to find out, it's a little actuator that a little motor over there won't won't shift right when you because uh, it's got dual zone climate control, blah blah blah. Um, and um, so it's hot as piss in the ninety five degree air side on my side. And my wife's over there going, "What? This is awesome! I, I don't know what you're bitching about, man. This feels <laughs> amazing over here." Yeah. So sweet justice. So and me and you talked about this a little bit on our trip uh, that Danny wasn't along for. Um, by the way, even though he was invited. <laughs> But, uh, but so I went and I scheduled service on this truck and <clears throat> I took my son's center up there and, and we got it all serviced, ready to go. And I was like, Hey, I need to get my Titan serviced. And I won't, I won't say what dealership it at it's in, but it's in middle Tennessee. Um, and so being the guy, being the car truck person I am, I'm like, I know what it is. And even the guy, the, the service tech that, that took my info, he's like, yep. That's the problem. It We've had a bunch of them come in for that. I get that the truck has to come in and get on a rack and they officially diagnose this. But don't schedule me for a repair. And then two weeks later when I take it in for the repair, go, oh, well, you have to come back for that repair because we don't have the part in stock. And, oh, guess what? It's on back order. So we'll just call you when, uh, when it comes in. But what leads me to this is my first service tech, in bay number seven, if he's listening, was a uh, freaking amazing man. A guy from, uh, he was a Steelers fan. So uh, the, as a Bengals fan, I, I can't like Jeez, super, dude, super. You still like him? I know, man. It's strange. But uh, the guy knew his. Your part wasn't ordered. Yeah, That's but the deep. car was. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, but he knew, like he took care of me. And I'm sure I'll, I'll have you do a thing on this with Regal. But like, he was a great service tech. Like he, I didn't need my handheld. He knew that. But he was like, yep know the problem we know we're gonna we're gonna take care of you and uh the next time i come in two weeks later i get a guy that clearly is new because he doesn't even have the dealership shirt on yet um he keeps maybe looking down laundry day maybe <laughs> um but i'm pretty sure the dealership offers a service for that so so i'm asking him simple things like uh, my battery in my remote because it has the the remote start and all that i was like when does when does uh it's starting to where it doesn't want to do this thing right and uh the dude's scrambling to look at a sheet of paper i guess and maybe your dealership does this holding do they have like a okay it's a time frame of when things kind of like batteries and these these uh remotes go out but dude's scrambling to find that sheet and then he's scrambling to find this and i'm so aggravated because i dealt with such an amazing guy the week before and then it's um it's Joe Blow that doesn't know anything about Nissan cars is the guy that I get to service my vehicle or take my vehicle in, man. So tell me, tell me this is not an ordinary or this is 
you know, once in a lifetime thing that happens at dealerships, Holden, that. Well, you try to make it, you try not to make it that way. But here's the thing is when you got, if you got a, let's just take your example. So you got the Titan, you know, it's got this issue. Well, here's what can happen as working in every facet of the dealership. I can attest to sometimes this is what happens. And I don't know if this is the case right now because I'm kind of out of the parts department, but mode door actuators. Nissan recognizes there's a problem with them. So they're on back order. Well, that means you can't, sometimes they get on such a back order where you can't actually stock order one in because it would make sense. Hey, I know this is a problem. Right. I've repaired three or four. You know, us <clears throat> at our dealership, if we get two parts hits in a three month period, we're going to stock one. Um, Cause you gotta, you gotta have a balance. You can't just have a, everything sure so people think oh why don't you just have everything you can't have everything but you also got to have a, a mix of you know fast moving slow moving you know stuff you've sold but what could have happened is when it gets on such a back order you actually got to have a ticket with that vin and miles to be able to order the part but here's the kicker it can be on back order but to upgrade it which would be a vor vehicle off-road the vehicle actually has to be at the dealership Technically, it's supposed to. When I was the parts manager, I'd VOR shit all the time that wasn't on my lot. Wait, you did not. Out. Nissan, Nissan, you did not uh, turn off the radio right now. Uh, if they you're know the what happens. <laughs> they're, in the customer, they're in the customer business. They, they, they should know stuff like that happens. But going into service advisors and not knowing things like, like that, um, that's something you always want to try to avoid. Obviously... I know I'm going to scare people, but not everyone that's a service advisor was born a service advisor, went to school to be a service advisor. I don't even know where a service advisor school is. A lot of times, this guy, dude, guys, this guy felt like he came from the auto detailing department and they just sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's a a porter, a quick loop guy who, who shows a promise. Us, we always have stepping stones that we like to put them in. You know, we'll we'll make them in charge of maybe the quick lube, where they're doing basic upsells like upselling. You know, your air filters. It's mm-hmm. it's pretty no brainer. You know, your air filter's dirty. Here's your air filter, Mr. Customer. You can see it. It's dirty. You need a new one. Uh, you, you need a brake job. Your brakes are at three millimeters. It, you can train someone on some of those things. Once you start getting more into you know, mode door actuators, CV axles, some crazy stuff. You know, it's going to take some time. So well, we all at our dealership always like to have stepping stones. We never like to throw someone completely into the fire. But right. unfortunately, that's that's the way some, some places do operate is, hey, you're you got a pulse. You know how to write up an RO. Congratulations. You're a service advisor. <laughs> Figure it out. Right. Well, the, um, the thing of it was, so I took my truck in for, uh, I had a squeaking up front and it sounded just like when a coil, the bottom where it connects to the lower control arm, they'll get loose and it makes this little squeaking noise where it's, it's, it's doing that. And, and I, I said, Hey, you know, this it's doing this. So the guy calls me and goes, Hey, Mr. Boyd, your truck's ready. Um, so we had to put new leaf springs on the truck and we did this and that. And I'm like, what? For one, I know you don't just keep leaf springs in, in the dealership just itching to throw them on a truck. Two, it wasn't even in the rear of the truck that my problem was. And three, he didn't even know what I was – he didn't know what a leaf spring was. I mean, I'm like, please don't – it's bad enough that, that I could send my wife to some dealership sometimes. And, of course, she's a car nut. But as as a lady, they treat her like, like she's kind of an idiot because she's a lady taking a car in there. And that's a big manly thing, you know. But it's two is when a, a guy that – I even talked to this guy beforehand of like, hey, you know, and I don't throw out, hey, I worked for Nissan or anything, but I'm like, hey, I'm a car guy. I kind of know what's going on. We all know you showed up with your big, huge Nissan I Nation did. podcast well, shirt. The, was it the banner? Hat, and yeah. probably a microphone. Yeah. I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal. He's spurting out Dannyisms to the guy. The no, guy I just said Danny and they knew. Listen, listen, Dave, let me let me give you a huge word of advice. And this is, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I was a BMW mechanic for a long time. Drink right now, uh, And I worked i worked with service advisors uh, every single day for six years, seven years. Uh, and now at the tire shop, I'm a, I'm a glorified service, service advisor because basically I sell tires and service and heavy repair and stuff on one day a week. Um, but as, uh, you know, I, I've kind of felt all the facets of it. I, I haven't been a service advisor, but I've 
I worked with them enough to know that, and, and this, is, this goes for basically every position. There's good service advisors and there's bad service advisors, just like there's good mechanics and bad mechanics in the world. You know, um, my thing, what I always told my friends when they would come in with their BMWs, I said, listen, go see this service advisor and, uh, you know, get his card and that's who you deal with. And then if you want, you know, and tell them that you want your car worked on by me. And if you can't get in to see me, you can come, you know, schedule an appointment to come see me and work with this same service advisor. And that was kind of a, that was kind of a thing to do. If you find a service advisor that you like, you schedule with that service advisor and you work with that person. And, um, it, in, in, in my dealings with, uh, with Nissan service advisors and with my truck, the, the few times that I have gone to the dealership that I've had to get work done, I, I used the same guy cause he was pretty good. Um, would this be the same but, guy that did your uh, airbag repair? Yes. So they know how to the pull. Mechanic, the mechanic was trash, not the service advisor. So they know how to pull a front windshield out, is what you're saying, and put a. They do a terrible job. No, because they sublet that, and that pissed me off. <laughs> See, now now, now I've got Danny on my side. <laughs> it, was the, it was the mechanic I got screwed by, not the service advisor. That's what pissed me off. The service advisor was good. He called me when he needed to and told me what was going on. He worked with the, you know, he, he helped me, he helped me get with the, uh, the rep and, uh, coordinated that and stuff like that. He, he was good, but yeah. So I would never take my, I, I would never take my car to go get it fixed by that mechanic ever again. But if you, if you find the right mechanic and the right service advisor, stick with them. Yeah. One, th one thing I've uh, brought back from some of the stuff I've done and uh, going to start implementing in our dealership is I'm actually going to get our technicians, not just our service advisor, our technicians cards where they can leave those yes. in the cup holder. So after yeah. you know you had a repair, I obviously got your service advisor cards. I When I sold cars, I would always take my customers to the same two service advisors, not because they were necessarily better, but they were two guys I knew I could count on in a pinch if I ever needed something. But then, too, I was building a rapport where if they had someone, they'd refer them to me. But you build up that relationship. Um, us, we got customers yeah. that become the same service advisor for 10 years. Um, yeah. But then also I want our technicians. I want them, uh, maybe a customer, hey, that guy's fixed my squeak. Maybe it wasn't a big deal, but they have his card and say, next time they come in, hey, I want Eric to work on my car. He did a good job last time. And it kind of yeah. personalizes that whole process. And so. the thing is, too, is if you build that trust, you say, you know, Eric, Eric says that you need this. You'd be like, oh, well, I trust Eric and I trust my service advisor, Joe. So, yeah, whatever it needs, you know, you throw him the keys and you say, peace yeah. out. Whatever you need to take care of this, here's my complaints. I know you're going to cover me. And all of a sudden this turns into, you know, where you're freaking – grinding your teeth trying to sell him some brake pads that you know he's metal to metal on his brakes or something like that whereas it's here's your keys peace late you know and like that's it's a big deal if you trust your service advisor but if you if you have a service advisor that you're you're like well i already know 90 percent more than you about all the cars in your lot uh i don't ever want to talk to you again do you have another service advisor i can talk to? well that was i mean that was definitely this before where i said let me let, can i can i get another service advisor i said that to, at a place once yeah. and i ended up talking to the to the sale to the um service manager because the guy was just completely not he had no idea what i was talking about when i was talking about because I, I had a blown cv boot and he was like he's like your boots are blown like on your shocks and i'm like bro, can I talk to your manager, dude? And so I took it up to the manager. And I'm like, listen, dude, I've had this truck for like four months and I, you know, my CV boot blew, blew. I'm like, can you goodwill this? And he, I'm like, you know, cause I had a, I had a little left, a little lift. And I, I tried to pull some weight. And I'm like, you know, I got a podcast. I'm like, I run an <laughs> off aftermarket thing. I'm like, this, I've had this truck for like four months and my CV boot blew. He's like, I'll goodwill it for you, man. And he's like, here, deal with this guy from now on. Well, so he gave me a good service advisor, and, and like that guy was clutch from from then on. I dealt with that guy. Well, so after I get the phone call about replacing my leaf springs or whatever, I'm like, what? I, I, I'm like, okay, what? Well, maybe you know. I, I'm like, well, okay, maybe. So I get there, and then you know the truck's under warranty. Guess what's sitting there waiting on me? A, a bill for a couple hundred dollars or something, and I'm like, what? What are you? So. Part of this, which Holden told me was a, a kind of screw new customers over, was they included oil changes or whatever in with this. So I don't pay for oil changes. So there they tried to charge me for an oil change, fixing the truck and all this stuff. And I'm like, 
dude, you, as soon as you drive in, they pull your VIN. They have all my information there. And then like the dude was so scrambled. I like, I kind of not raising hell, but I was like, what is this? You know, just in a tone trying to get their attention. And he's taking me to the cashier and I look at her and I'm like, I'm not paying for this. And she kind of yeah. looked at me like, uh, and he, he scrambles back. Like, and, not, uh, not my problem. <laughs> yeah. And he scrambles back and I don't like, he just said, he just grabbed my keys and goes, I'll take care of this. And just ran me out to my car to get rid of me. And I'm like, what, what is this clown show, man? I like yeah. by my local dealership, they are hit or miss. I mean, they really are. And they just got bought out. And I think that's part of the problem. All these guys are like a little scared of, are we going to be here next month when they change over happens? But well, I, Unfortunately, it's kind of part of the industry, uh, yeah. and that's not the way it should be. And I'm not trying to make excuses at all. But with te- in regards to technicians, there, if if you keep up with the automotive industry at all, there is a huge outcry right now. There is a shortage of technicians. Um, there's a shortage of people who want to work on cars nowadays. So that's something I know us we 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 you're, tried to partner with technical schools and things like that. You're trying telling to me. Get, you're telling me that people went and spent a hundred thousand dollars on college for that that uh, uh, sociology you spend, degree. You spent twenty thousand dollars at Wyo Tech or UTI, and you could be rolling out making sixty right off the bat, up to a hundred probably but, if you're but, a good tech. But you're telling me these people that went for you know history or whatever their major was, uh, dog studies, they're not servicing my vehicle now. Well, they they might be actually the bright <laughs> yeah, young minds. They, 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 they might be starting off as quickly or something. Oil. <laughs> yeah, they'll they'll uh, undo your dips, your uh, drain plug, but and then service advisor. That's it. It depends on the dealership. But I, I mean, one of my my best service advisor I got right now started off as a porter. Yeah. Um, I helped train them. It was a rough, you know, few months. Um, you know, like I said, we we usually start them off just in the quick loop where they're just selling very basic service, but it, it can be kind of rough there. And, and that's not the way it should be. And that's one thing we've been trying to do a better job on is actually having a standardized training for the service advisors. But think about it. There's not really anywhere you can go send someone to service advisor school. Right. Well, they've got to be a people. They've got to be, you've got to, the dealerships need to look at, and they got to be people like people, people. You can't have somebody that. Well, yeah, that you, ha- you have to have like good sales experience. And you, I think, I think understanding customer, customer service from a, from a from kind of both aspects as a customer but then also as a you know a money making enterprise and being able to balance that and make like i i don't know i i grew i grew up selling stuff you know at at, a, at the tire way back as a as a tire person and i they, they had classes where it was you know features and benefits class and this and that class and and so i kind of started getting you know the the experience of being a salesman so you th- there are you know, you can go and take some some schooling to in sales, um, and sales tactics and stuff like that, which is huge. But at the same time, you have to understand the customer, um, customer service and and customer experience um, side of things to know that you know it's not all about just making somebody say yes to a sale. Sure, it's about making them say yes, and when when they're done with their entire sale and everything they're walking away feeling like they just like, you know, that it was the best sales experience of their life. It's about the sales experience, not about how much money you can sell or, you know, how right. much stuff you can sell. Well, because if they never come back, it doesn't matter how much you sell because you well, lost out on the rest of the sales for right. the rest of their lives. Well, days are gone or, or, you know, I know, I know dealerships get that slimy, they're out for your money kind of thing. And days are gone of, you know, like it's just some mechanic just wasting hours back there trying to diagnose something. It's all pretty simple anymore. Um, but nothing makes you feel like it's a slimy dealership when the the face of their company from a service standpoint is a moron. And and that clear <laughs> it, no and I don't I don't mean like it, this guy he was he was a nice guy. He wasn't like a just like a dick to me or anything, but you can't have even if they're new, you can't have people like it like Holden said you know you start them out and just selling oil changes or something and, and work learning people skills and then move up but uh we won't we won't bash those poor, poor well, guys and anymore. I, I think too I mean some of it's sell skills but you also just gotta have people skills like Danny was saying initially is I've I, we had a technician great technician decided he was tired of working on cars and wanted to come sell service 
terrible service advisor. He could tell you all, uh, you know, any of your questions you want to know, what's a CV axle, what's a wheel bearing, what's this, that, the other. He could explain it to a customer in simple, easy, but he was just terrible with people. Like he'd easily just choose someone out if they were making a stupid decision about their car and stuff. And then you maybe have a guy who doesn't know as much about cars, but he's just got great people, sales skills, and can make people feel comfortable. So it's a balancing act. Um, well, speaking you can of, always l- learn more about cars, but sometimes people skills yeah. are a lot harder to teach. Well, speaking yeah, of feeling true. feeling comfortable, man, let's uh, let's let's wrap this up before Holden can't even speak tomorrow. <laughs> um, uh, Danny, any any last things you for because you, I know you jumped in a little I, late. I man. know I hopped in a little bit late. Uh, I guess I guess I like to I like to give my uh, my race truck lowdowns. Um, just a just a heads up, and that was the Nissan Nation podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know nobody cares. My YouTube videos are low, and uh, uh, no, I think uh, I posted a picture the other day up on uh, up on my uh, Instagram and stuff. Uh, we got the front suspension basically figured out, um, so that's uh, tight, tight, that's tight over there. Seventy five percent done. Um, so now he's uh, he's dropping in the engine cage. We'll be bringing some front fenders over there so they can uh, get the get some mounts up for those and make sure that everything cycles you, good. So do you uh, even have some... rear springs for this truck yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, rear I didn't know. Rear suspension's if you... done. Rear suspension totally done. I mean, it it needs to be kind of uh, you know some new U bolts and a couple more mounts. I think I got a uh, bump stops, rear bump stops. I think need to be put in, but I, they're they're pretty much done. Um, so I. I'm looking. I'm looking to. Ra- I'm still looking to race in December. I'm still pushing for that. And speaking of racing, so. man, I seen Team Xterra racing. They got their truck back together and on all four rims and tires. And uh, looks like they yeah, were doing some yeah. testing. Jess Jessica Blakely is uh, out doing training. I mean, uh, she's training how to race the truck, which is, you know what, she probably has more pedal time than I do. So, which is good for her. Hats off to her. Maybe. Maybe she can. She, maybe she can keep the doors on. <laughs> I can see me. I can see me and Holden having a bet of who goes farther when you actually get in a race with Team Xterra Racing. And uh, well, we'll see. Uh, that that'll be that'll be some good money. That'll be a good pot. That um, would that would be. And you know, can we can have side bets of like, will the wheels stay on or uh, yeah, what part yeah, falls off first? Explode? I will say that we ran into a problem. Those those badass KMC wheels that we got, um, they hit the brakes on the hub, mm-hmm. um, which was unforeseen because they're a custom wheel. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board on on how to set up the brakes. So I may have to put on some new brakes. Yeah, but you don't want to go um, smaller, right? Because that was part of the problem. Was no, that... no, no. It, it's just it's just a matter of the the stock brakes sit really close to where the hub mounting face is and the and the spokes are pretty close to that mm. so i mean in the interim while we're while we're while we're doing stuff we're just throwing a little spacer in the front i bet not uh we're, we're not going to race like that but um i bet team xterra racing has some 16 inch pro 4x rims that uh would probably fit on that truck and maybe not I'm, fall apart i'm sure they would but uh <laughs> not how we're rolling <laughs> so that's the update that's the latest we're still working hard on that. Well, what's your uh, what's your uh, speaking of low low numbers, man? What's your YouTube channel? What where can people find your videos? That is Degroot X. I dropped a quick little how how to on on how to put some uh, some ARP studs in the in the Xterra hubs recently. I seen that so, man. It was uh, it was and, quite. And next next weekend's my birthday, so I think I'm gonna drive out and drop off the fenders and get some more video of the of the new front end and stuff like that. So. Well, this is the Should first birthday video. in a long oh, no. time we haven't got to spend together, buddy. I think it's the second birthday that that we haven't spent together, isn't it? Was I at Went last year? Yeah, you came to Went. You flew in and flew out. Oh, that's right, because it was the first time that Went was not on my birthday. Yeah, but it's still yeah. around your time, man. And it's and it's when Garth kicked your ass. Yeah, what did you drink? No, no, no. Garth wrestled me when I wasn't expecting while I was drunk. And for the record, I did get him in a full mount. And then is that, be, is that before or after you puked? And that, and that, well, <laughs> you should never try and do some MMA wrestling with a six four um, ex legionnaire. Yeah. Uh, after you've been drinking moonshine for what like was two that, hours. What was that stuff that he? Um... Oh yeah, Serbian Serbian moonshine. That's what it was. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. Freaking Garth, dude. Serbian moonshine. Garth, shout out to you and your Serbian moonshine. I've never I've never drank anything so 
freaking that literally that was the most whack stuff I've ever drank in my life, dude. And, but I've you never know what's put anything. I, it tasted like rubbing. It was literally rubbing alcohol. But you know what was I bad think was alcohol would have been better. So I, he handed me that bottle last year. It went and he's like, um, "Here, take a, p- a plug of this." And I was thinking, "Oh, it's just vodka or something." So I take a big plug of that, and then he goes, "Yeah, you know, you c- might hallucinate with this." And I was like, "After I swallow it, I'm like, I don't even what? know if that was booze, dude." I'm yeah. telling you. That, I don't think that's that like he, he messaged me found in the cupboard. It's like he <laughs> messaged me the other day because he saw us up in DC and he's like, Hey man, I'm right outside DC. So if you ever want to hang out or, you know, grab some drinks, crash on my couch, I'm like in my back of my mind, I remembered him with that Serbian shit. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I got classes and stuff. I can't be hallucinating in class because I drink. <laughs> Serbian moonshine with Garth. Serbian abs- absinthe. Garth is an onion, man. You just keep peeling. Every time I see that guy, I meet that guy, man, I peel him back another layer, dude. I, he's crazy, dude. I like Garth, but man, what a wild card. It's yeah. Good time. It's good time. And what's what's he doing there in D.C., jumping over the, the Washington Monument with that Xterra? Because he likes jumping yeah. that thing. Yeah. He's dropping a V8 in that thing, right? Yeah. 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 That thing's pretty beast, man. We'll see. Well, um, and, and speaking of seeing Danny, we were not. This is the last episode before we went, man. You, uh, do you got any words sad. of encouragement before we uh, we head out of here? Since you won't be there this year. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe I'd I'd love to be able to call in. I don't know if we'll be, I'll be. Able I think to that's going to happen. I, I think I'm going to ha- I'm going to do my best to try. You're going to have to keep in contact. Maybe do a couple FaceTime so we can all so I can get a little bit just a taste just, uh, so I can get just a tip you know what I'm saying just uh, the rock challenge how about that because you you seem all to right. miss that or, or you're riding in wild bill seats so yeah yeah well yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty bummed that I'm not being out there uh, it's it's, de- it's definitely hurting my feet like I thought about ten times now like what if I just grab a ticket like right now what if I just buy a <laughs> ticket you know just fly out dude. And I'm like looking at the finances, and my wife's li- in my like my wife's going on a cruise at the end of the month, like literally like like three weeks from now, and she's like, "Yeah, you but gotta wouldn't take it, care of the kids. You can't be leaving. Wouldn't like, it be uh, better? You would be refreshed, that. Danny. Danny, you would come because once in two weeks, you would be refreshed, man. You'd be coming back. You'd had a couple of days of of, and then you're like, I'm I'm ready to tackle these kids. Yeah, I don't. Well, at least at least we'll have the best two thirds of the podcast there. Uh, something like that. The holding I don't know. effect. If you look at the numbers of this last, this last, uh, this last week and a half, none of, you're not in most of those big numbers, bro. Just letting you know. <laughs> Saying. And speaking of which, I don't, have, I don't, I don't have to reshare my episodes to do numbers. I do them on the first shoot. run. Ooh, ooh. We don't have to re-release nothing. People are still trying to guess your name. What's that guy's name? Hudden? <laughs> the the five-year anniversary re-release of episode <laughs> forty-two. Check it out now. That's right, brother. Oh man! And speaking of that, guys, if you, uh, however you listen to us, we, uh, I do, I do toss these on some of our favorite uh, Facebook pages from time to time, and uh, we want to. Say thank you for uh, listening, and uh, if you're new to it, we actually had a nice Danny. I know I tagged you in that man. We had a guy that just found us, was digging. He was like, "I'm never yeah. going to sass my vehicle," but uh, he goes, "As long as Holden don't talk, I'm I'm pretty good with the show." Yeah, that was that was a good message. That was my favorite message of the day, actually. It was, man. <laughs> and uh, and speaking of which, guys, if you listen, go to our Facebook page, go to our uh, website, click our Amazon banner. That's right, Amazon. That's all we ask, man. Just do some shopping through there. We get a we get a tiny, tiny uh, penny or two from that, and it helps fund this uh, pirate ship that we call the Nissan Nation Podcast. And uh, if that, if you need some OEM parts, go see our uh, our sponsor, uh, Regal Nissan, over there. What is it, Regal Nissan Parts, Holden, or is- RegalNissanParts dot com dot com and uh, and if you're into racing, go to Team Xterra Racing. I mean, uh, Degroot X. <laughs> and uh and uh give uh danny over there some love man so so from everybody here at the nissan nation podcast to jr who i'm about to party with man he's gonna be at went this year super excited uh, by that nice we're kate we're kiss gonna, for me would you oh i'll kiss that shiny bald head for you buddy mm. i'll uh i'll do my best marilyn monroe on him like i did you at the cabin that time in us a... <laughs> danny was i was sleeping um I can't. Sorry, Danny. I can't talk about that. But so from everybody here at the Nissan, pay, geez, almost gonna get out of here. I'm almost, Danny. Uh, Danny, take us out of here, man. From everybody here at the Nissan Nation podcast, what are we, Dave? We are out. <laughs>
Peace, everybody. See y'all in two weeks at Wint. Out. Where are they? <laughs>